we're here in Tiananmen Square, which is the largest square in the world at 100 acres. That's pretty huge when you think about it. It's bigger than the Red Square in Russia, and it is pretty magnificent to be standing here. This is one of the only gates that is left here in Beijing, and right beside it, you can see that there is another gate, which is actually the guard gate. So that is to look over that one and protect it. There are only two gates left here in Beijing. Tiananmen Square was the site of the 1989 protests in China where casualties were high after military forces opened fire on demonstrators. Today, nobody talks about the massacre and instead, the square is a place for celebration in China as a lot of the population knows nothing about the incident. So we are in the heart of Tiananmen Square. This is where all the action happens and this is where the people think of celebration and happiness. This is Behind me is the government building and the People's Monument uh, commemorating all the wars and all the people who have died for China. You have the National Museum on one side, you have Chairman Mao's tomb on the other, and you have Tiananmen Gate, the oldest building in the square built 600 years ago. We are very lucky to be here at this time of year. October 1st is the national holiday and they have this giant vase built right in Tiananmen Square to celebrate. Wow, it's quite impressive. Behind me, we're quite close to the China Railway Museum. Wow, it's very festive here in Tiananmen Square. There's a big crowd checking out the vase. It's busy. I can only imagine what it's going to be like on October 1st. Wow. This is pretty cool. So we're at Tiananmen Gate, which is really the symbol of China. And this is how you get from Tiananmen Square to the Forbidden City. There's a whole underground pathway that goes underneath the street to pop up at the other side. Pretty convenient. Still going! Tiananmen Square and the Forbidden City are often toured together because of their close proximity. It's just a short walk in an underground path to the entrance. incredible. I didn't really take it in the last time we were here, but being here with a ton of people, it really, you really get a great feeling of what the Tiananmen Gate's all about. Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to enter the Forbidden City. It's not so forbidden anymore, people. So we've made it here inside the Forbidden City, inside the, the main gate, and man, you can just feel the history here when you walk in. You've been here for so long, you wonder who walked along these stones. It really is one of the most impressive places I've seen. The Forbidden City was home to emperors and their houses for more than 500 years until the last emperor of China in 1912. It is now open to the public to explore its nearly 9,000 rooms spread throughout 150 acres of land. Well, we've already walked through two gates and we're still going in the Forbidden City and we're not even in the inner city yet. This is massive and absolutely beautiful. The marble staircases, the marble ornate bridges, you know, the cobblestone streets. It's really incredible. You must visit it if you come to China. A tour of the Forbidden City takes anywhere from two hours to a full day, depending on how many rooms you want to explore. So we've entered into the inner workings of the palace here. This is where he had his concubines and all the secret stuff went down. As many people lived in here, like the concubines, the empress, the emperor himself. There was everybody who lived in the inner sanctum here of the palace. So when you come to the Forbidden City, you can go in and get your photo taken as the Emperor and then they put it on a video and have you flying over the Forbidden City. It's really cute. The Imperial Gardens were built during the Ming Dynasty in 1417 and have an impressive display of rock gardens, pavilions, flower beds and centuries old trees. Well, 
we have come to the end of our tour at the Royal Gardens and it is just filled with people. I'm telling you, I think the entire city of Beijing is right here checking out the gardens. But it's a very cool thing to explore when you come to Beijing. Make sure you come to the Forbidden City and check it all out. So when you go to the Forbidden City, make sure you head up to the hill to get an overview over everything. Jingshan Park is the final stop on your Forbidden City tour as it offers a high viewpoint to see the roofs and a panoramic view of both the palace and the city of Beijing. The hill was taken from the soil that was used to make the moat that surrounds the Forbidden City and this was the former private imperial gardens. 1,998, 1,999, 2,000. Actually, I have no idea how many steps it is. <laughs> It is definitely worth walking up the hill to overlook the Forbidden City. The moat is 52 meters wide, and that's because back in the day, an arrow couldn't shoot farther than 52 meters, so it kept everyone safe. So come on up here and you look over the whole of city, whole of whole of the Forbidden City, and Beijing. It's busy, but it's worth it. Check out more videos from China and around the continent in our Asia playlist. And be sure to subscribe to our channel and click the bell for weekly travel videos in your inbox.